to the record from uh, Sepo Jeans. Read, 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 read. Yeah. From humble beginnings. <laughs> from humble beginnings come great things. Wow. <laughs> now it is second nature that we have come to appreciate the EFF for recognizing not only that for protecting and upholding the standard of pan-Africanism in South Africa and throughout Africa at large. You know, it was it was good seeing the EFF going to the Western Cape to go and pay a visit, uh, to go and pay their respect and show gratitude to the youngest black judge that was appointed to the High Court, the first black African judge to be appointed in the High Court of the Western Cape. So it is, it is refreshing to see what is happening there. But I, I promised you guys that I will do a, a video specially for O Judge John Trope, and that's exactly what I want to do on this video. So there is some few videos that I want to play for you guys so that we can understand why is it that Judge John Trope was impeached by Parliament by the wicked ANC voting with the wicked DA. I mean, the ANC that should hold and protect the Judge John Trope uh, with everything that they have, being being him the first. African judge to be appointed in the high court, but they dismissed him. And I'm going to give you the reasons why exactly they did that in this video. Let's just quickly look at the visit of the EFF at the premises of John, uh, John Trope and exactly what happened there. Peace in Pan-Africanism to all my African brothers and sisters from all around the world. Welcome back to King Said So. I am your host, King 053, Mr. Easy Imali, ending in ending. And we're back at it again with another one. And this time around, we go to the Western Cape, where the EFF went to go and pay respect. Or oh, a visit, a friendly a visit to our, the, 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 you know, the excellent John Chope. The judge that we should celebrate as Africans. I mean, the man who came directly from school into a bench of a judge. That's how special the case of John Trope, John Trope uh, was actually. So, I want to I want to speak a little bit more about the situation that got him to be impeached. I want to speak a little bit more about his Pan Africanism stand and the reason why white. Our colonizers, the settlers, will always hate people like John Trope. Now, for the for the for the sake of not making the video too long, I'm going to try and chop it up and give you um, the, the most important thing. But if you want a part two of this video, you will feel free to go in the comment section and type "King Do It," and I'll give you a type two. No, no question. Now, let us hear what the DA said. 
and what was their stance about John Kabat. I just want to set the tone um, before I go into the deeper things about how the DA viewed uh, John Thorpe. And it's important why I'm playing this clip because our, our, our enemies, which is our the white settlers, it is important to hear what they say about you. Because what they say about you automatically tells us what type of an African you are. There is no way that the settlers, the Dutch settlers, can praise anyone that is pro-African. There is no way. That is why we say the best president in South Africa is Jacob Zuma because of what the settlers say. Forget about what black people say about Jacob Zuma. Leave that one alone. Listen to what the, the so-called Dutch settlers, the so-called African people, the, the so-called um, <laughs> you know, European, African, whatever you want to call them, those who colonized us, listen to what they say about John Trump. What played out yesterday unprecedented and also listening to your remarks um, during the voting or just ahead of the voting is that uh, Judge President John Lopper had an illustrious career. Uh, the youngest um, judge to be appointed in the Western Cape High Court, also the youngest judge president. And here's somebody who was appointed directly from academia to the bench. Uh, look, he had, I mean, Judge President Lopper had everything going for him. He was, he had, a, he's very well educated. Uh, he has a, a very strong academic background. He was uh, appointed straight to the bench from academia, as you say. And he had a whole string of the youngest of everything. Uh, so he had, you know, every opportunity to have a really stellar judicial career. He could have made a real impact, uh, as everyone expected him to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very unfortunate that, that his career has ended up this way, but he has no one to blame but himself. Yeah. Would you say, looking back at the history of Judge John Klopp as well, if you look, for instance, at some of the complaints that have been lodged against him, outside of this particular complaint by Bess and Gabinde as well as Chris Jafta, that there had been moments where there were red flags um, that uh, the Judicial Service Commission should have actually have acted on that would have avoided us even getting to this particular stage? Well, absolutely. You know, his, his career was uh, a controversial one. Uh, there were many controversies, uh, both personal and professional. Uh, and he just never managed to live up to the, the very stringent, uh, granted, very stringent requirements uh, for, for being a judge. You know, uh, when one wants to uh, you know, be elevated to the bench and, and sit in judgment of other people, you're held to a much higher standard than than other people, and, and that's unfortunately the way it has to be. Uh, and so you have to, you know, you have to live an exemplary personal life, you have to live an exemplary professional life, and there's, you know, there's no room for anything to fall between the cracks. Now, many events has led to um, the DA trying by all means to get rid of John Thorpe. They have been trying for years, to be exactly from 19, uh, 2008, they've been trying. Now, the issue with the 2008 um, uh, situation is that John Thorpe spoke to two judges. One, I think, is a female, another one is a male, black both. And he spoke to them and said, uh, and discussed the issue of Jacob Zuma. There is the key. That is the key, okay? Jacob Zuma was in discussion with these two judges. Hold that thought. Now, when we circle back and we try to look at footages where John Kappé was speaking and to understand why is it that white people hate John Kappé, it's because John Kappé called a spade a spade. He said, white people are thieves. They are the ones who stole our land. And he said it in public. He said it with no fear, no favor. Many politicians, even today, we can't, we can't find a politician that speaks like John Kroppen. As a guest speaker that goes and speaks directly and said, we should normalize speaking about the issue of land. Listen to what Mr. Kroppen said. This. If you look at other nationalities, the Jews, for example, wherever they are, they talk about the genocide. Yes. 
they remind their children, Jewish children know about their history. They know about genocide. Why can't we talk about land at least three times a day? <laughs> yes. When you wake up in the morning, you are having breakfast with your children and your wife. Tell them that this land was stolen and there is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> There goes the thief, he stole my life. When you have lunch at work with your colleagues, tell them, there is the thief standing there smoking a cigar. There is the thief having a, a, a glass of red wine. He is still standing on our land. He stole it. When you have dinner, whether you're at a restaurant, just say, there is the thief. <laughs> Analyze this debate. There is no two ways about it. We are too, it's just fragmented now. I'm talking about it. You will talk about it, my brother, 20 years down the line, if you remember. And that is why, exactly why, we would celebrate a person like John Kirby. Because he was not afraid to speak the truth. Even today, you see politician Dilly Darling dancing around the fire when it comes to this issue of the land. Nobody, well, you know, the ANC will speak about land expropriation without, you don't see any action from any political party in South Africa about land. We are sick and tired of not having land. It has become a normal thing, especially in the black family, for children to be in their 30s and still staying with their parents. Uh, forget about getting married and whatever. In your 30s, still staying in your parent is not normal, depending on the house situation. If you're the only child, we can excuse you. But if there's a multiple siblings, as is the case to most uh, African families, when the older siblings grow up, they should make way for the younger ones. It is normal like that. And then when they are working, they should build their own back room so that when they come back at home to visit, they must not sleep in the main house, sleep there at the back. Because they are old, they give the other people a chance. That is what white people do. They make sure that their children are sorted out. You will see young white boys driving um, buggies that me and you only dream about having. But they will teach them to have ownership from a small age using the money that their great great grandparents has has stolen from us and the land that they stolen from us. So it is very refreshing to hear Judge John Cropper speaking, speaking about the issue and he's saying long normalize it, speak about it, breakfast, speak about it at, at lunch, speak about it. At supper, they were laughing at him because you know other people they they are laughing because there is white people inside the room and it is an uncomfortable truth that uh, John Trapper was saying. Now let's get into the merits of the case. Why exactly John Trapper was impeached in Parliament? He is linked. He is linked to Jacob Zuma. He is linked to. Jacob Zuma. What am I saying? He met a, 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 a fellow judge in 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 Gauteng and they spoke about the issue of 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 um, Jacob Zuma. I'm not sure which case it was. It must have been the arm case, uh, the arm case or the rape case. One of the two. I'm not hundred percent sure. Probably the, the arm case because they wanted to put all the blame on the uh, the arms deal on Jacob Zuma. So he spoke to the judge, said, listen, um, here's my opinion and whatever. And judges do this all the time. They speak about what is happening. So after that, a group of judges then opened a case that he is trying to influence them um, in certain cases. But there's two in particular who complained, uh, who were made uh, scapegoats. But these two... They said they did not feel influenced by uh, John Thorpe, each Marai corner. You know? Being an African is difficult. Now, you, you have a case, it's just a, a, a good example is that 
they they accuse you of beating two people but the two people that they said you beat uh, beat up are coming and say no he did not beat us up that is what is happening here he's been accused of influencing or trying to influence two judges and then the two judges that it's been said that they've been influenced come up and say no we don't think he influenced us yes the conversation happened where we spoke about jacob zuma and the likes but we don't feel influenced but anyway that was still good enough for them to attack john Trumpet. let's refresh your memory a little bit take us back to the two complaints yeah. against judge jordan Trumpet because there are two in the yes. main yeah, I think we, what I have to do is actually take you back to 2008, where, where, where I think that the majority of these issues actually come from. So, so in 2008, um, the judges of the Constitutional Court, as a, as a group, laid a complaint against Judge Lope. Um, and part of the reason why Helen Zeller has joined this conversation, because actually she had a role to play in that complaint ultimately being revived yeah. when she was Premier of the Western Cape. Okay. Um, now, our viewers might not recall, but we, we do have some graphics just to kind of take them through the timeline of what happened. But in 2008, initially there was a complaint by the Constitutional Court judges. And then subsequently, Judge Shope complained against the Constitutional Court judges as a group as well. Um, from there, there was quite a lot of litigation, about 14 different cases that actually went to the High Court and ultimately the Supreme Court of Appeal. Yeah. His, the, complaint, the two complaints were actually heard. Um, you know, the first one against Judge Lope had to do with an allegation that he tried to influence two judges of the Constitutional Court. It related to a matter involving, um, at the time, he was uh, Deputy President Jacob Zuma. He later became President Jacob Zuma. Um, and the allegation was that uh, Judge Lope went to speak to these two judges to try and sway them in favor of the, of the then Deputy President. Right. He then lays a complaint against the judges of the Constitutional Court saying, you shouldn't have uh, publicly complained about me without giving me an opportunity to first respond or at least be aware of that complaint. And he accuses them of misconduct. There's quite a lot of back and forth on this, but ultimately there is a hearing on the matter. And the Judicial Service Commission, which is the body that uh, makes decisions on what happens with judges when there are such complaints, they, there's a ruling from them that essentially says it seems like it was a conversation. Nobody disputes the conversation, but there isn't enough evidence here to say that this was actually uh, something improper or to prove misconduct. Mm -hmm. And misconduct is quite a serious um, allegation when it comes to the judiciary. It's one of the, the, the three sort of points that can actually get you removed as a judge. Another thing, another reason why we, we judge uh, John Thorpe was a black sheep is because just like Jacob Zuma, he feels like, why is it that South Africa must practice under the Roman Dutch law? You heard Jacob Zuma making a noise, say, why is it that we Africans, we don't have the African common law, but we are practicing the Roman Dutch, uh, Dutch law? The people who colonized us, coincidentally. But then, John Hope is saying, listen, why is it that in South Africa, we must quote a case that happened in um, before 1994, for example. He said, before 1994, humans did not have rights. We Africans did not have rights in our own country. Oh, who have bewitched us Africans? How did we allow Len Doty and eat? Huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting emotional because just to think that people can come, steal your land, rape you, change, uh, uh, steal your religion, take your, your spirituality, change your names, uh, change your surnames, change the names of the land, change everything, take you out of the land, kick you out, kill you, hang you, um, kill you by, uh, by the way of sending dogs, police dogs, hang you in public and all of that is the people who are doing that to you are not from your land it breaks my heart to think about that so judge uh, judge john Kepe is saying why should we be quoting these laws that happened before 1994 anything that happened in 1994 we should approach it caution cautiously so listen to what he said well, um judge president you know maybe just going back to some of the questions we had gone through 
and I even said earlier on that you were tipped to become Chief Justice, yes. which you responded to. I proudly call myself Chief Justice that South Africa never had and never will have. <laughs> uh, I don't think I stand a chance. Uh, I've been marginalized and too much controversy has been created deliberately around me to block me. It is my hope one day that the truth will come out, particularly with regard to all these allegations that have been leveled against me. Perhaps if you ask me, had I been appointed as a Chief Justice, what contribution was I going to make? I can tell you straight away. There are quite a few things that I would have wanted to introduce. One of the things I've already mentioned, making sure that we internalize the Constitution, we make our judgment, our judgments speak to the people of South Africa, rather than relying too much on foreign law and writing long judgments, helping every South African, particularly people from poor and marginalized communities, internalize the Constitution, uh, making sure that the law reaches out. There are some outreach projects, even at the schools and so on, because education is a long-term solution. We need that. But most importantly, I can assure you, had I been Chief Justice, I would have written a judgment which questions the relevance of the law prior to 1994. We find that today, earlier on, one of the colleagues made reference to, uh, you would find that there are judges in this country who would quote, for instance, a judgment of the appellate division, as it was then known, in 1943 or 1947, to interpret a concept of human rights, which human rights did not exist, by the way, until we have this constitution. How do you interpret a constitution, which is the product of democracy, which was founded after 1994 with reference to a decided case that was decided by an apartheid-appointed judge in 1947 or 1932? It just doesn't make sense. I question, in my view, the relevance of the law in this country, the so-called common law, which uh, law was in place before 1994. I question its relevance. To me, that law must be treated with great caution, right? We need to develop a new jurisprudence, new ethos that find their relevance, their origin directly from the Constitution. One of the things I do not like, there is a judgment of the Constitutional Court in terms of which an affected citizen must first look to common law for solution. It's called the subsidiary principle. In other words, if you claim that, if you allege that your rights have been violated one way or the other, you must first look to the constitution for, uh, sorry, you must first look to the common law and find a remedy in common law. Now, with respect, I have a problem with that. We had no right to vote before 1994. Why are we looking at the law which is foreign to us, which was forced down our throat, right? Because the law prior to 1994, we had no right to vote. As African people, we had our own legal system in this country, right? This, it is now, it has been relegated to the background. It's called African customary law. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ironically, 80% of the population, myself included, we practice this. I pray the law won't. Right, that's practicing African law, right? So you have a situation whereby a legal system like African customary law, which is practiced by the vast majority of the people on a daily basis, is relegated to the background. But the law of the oppressor, the law of the colonizer, the law of someone who came and forcibly took your land is the law that you embrace at the expense of your own culture. It doesn't make sense. I would have insisted on an agenda that clearly transforms the South African judiciary, that clearly overhauls the South African legal system so that we start literally afresh on a relatively clean slate and start to embrace the new ethos of our constitution. 
and look for solutions directly from the constitution as opposed to looking for solutions from the common law which law is not common to me at all so you heard it from the judge and that is exactly the reason why people like John Trope will be hated continuously forever up to his grave um, by, by our colonizers. They're going to hate him forever. And I think it is a responsibility for us Africans to then make awareness. We create awareness to say this man was a pan-Africanist and was the greatest judge in South African history. The youngest one from his, his time. I can go and find clips for you for when he was speaking when he was still young. If you want that, go in the comment section and type King Do It. And let's have at least 5,000 um, views for this video uh, in support of our judge, John Hoppe. And I leave a message of encouragement. You know, this uh, old man, they are, uh, he's what? He's, I think he's 60 or something like that. Um, they are sitting now, they are sitting in their homes uh, browsing through the internet and you will probably see this video us uh, speaking about him. And we want to say we love him. We love uh, John Thorpe. We we will we will protect his legacy as content creators, as pan Africanists. We will forever protect his legacy because he is a great man indeed. And for me, one of my criteria of judging who and who is a true pan Africanist is how his enemies speak about him. Now he he, he spent the. Uh, his majority of his career in the Western Cape. Let's hear when he was interviewed by the beautiful Musiso uh, Mushe um, at the EFF studios. What he said about him staying in the Western Cape and um, them being so resistant to transformation. So you were one of the first, if not the first black judge, um, you know, to be permanently appointed at the Western Cape province. Yes, I was the very first African to be appointed permanently as a judge hmm. uh, in the new dispensation. Prior to that, the only other African who was appointed was Pius Langa. He was appointed straight to the Constitutional Court. I, see. I was appointed straight to the High Court. I was the first African in and how has your experience been? I'm um, knowing very well how racist uh, that province is. It has been hell, to say the least. Uh, transformation, we all know, in the Western Cape is painfully very slow. And if you champion transformation like I've done that for the past 29 years, you immediately become the enemy hmm. of the establishment. They don't want any changes in the Western Cape. Pol uh, white politicians in the Western Cape, as you would know, uh, Princess Mahudwe, they still refer to black people as uh, uh, immigrants yeah. who come from the north, who are all South Africans, but in the eyes of a lot of uh, white politicians in the Western Cape who are all foreigners because the Western Cape is meant for them. So it has been hell all the way, but I'm not going to stop fighting for that which is just and humane. I think the, the enemy works as follows. They try to co-opt you. Mm -hmm. If they succeed, they will use you. You become a shining example because at that point you are just their spokesman. <laughs> right. I'd rather, be a, I'd rather be a free man in my grave than live as a puppet. Right. So you become a puppet, they control you, right? And I'm not. Yeah, you hear a lot of times when, when white people want to justify that they come from Dutch and they, whatever, they will say South Africa is a Khoisan land, Khoisan own everything, the rest of us come from, <laughs> from the north. Yeah, we all migrated from the north. You, you look at the oldest calendar in the world, not in Africa, in the world is found in Pumalanga. The footprint of the Khoisan people, the Khoi, the Sen, and the Nama people is not found in Limpopo. They never owned, they never claimed that they owned the entire of South Africa or they were the first people in the entire of South Africa. Yes, they were in the Western Cape. Yes, they were in, in, uh, in the Northern Cape. And they are such beautiful people and also in Na Namibia. They are such beautiful, uh, beautiful. Um, I don't want to call them a tribe. Yeah, well, we can call the Khoisan Nama people a tribe because tribe is three 
is three uh, three things that are mixed into one. That's what you call a tribe. So you uh, the Ngu, you will say the Nguni tribe, including Zulu, Kosa, and maybe in Debele. That's a tribe. It's three things comp uh, uh, compressed into one. It's a tribe. One. What we call a tribe is a Sutu tribe. It's not a tribe. Tribe, the word tribe means three already. Just giving you guys free education on that one. So, yes, that is, um, um, uh, I've lost my thought now. Um, the Nama people, they never claim that they, they owned Mpumalanga, Limpopo, KwaZulu Natal, and all of those places. They never free state, uh, even in the uh, west, northwest. Northwest, they never did, and white people want to make us feel guilty that we come from the north because they try to divide Africa into borders. Whether we come from the north or not, but life has started. Science has proven that life started in the south, migrated to the north, and came back as such. Uh, but whether we come from the north, the south, the east, or whatever, it doesn't matter. We are Africans, and we can never be foreigners in our own land. We can never call a Zimbabwean a foreigner in, in, in our land. This is our land as much as it's their land. A Nigerian brother is our brother as much as we are their brother. We are brothers from the same mother, different father. That is the situation that we Africans see ourselves with. These ones, they came here by boat. They don't come from here. They need to go and visit their family in the Dutch and in Europe and go and find their roots. Unfortunately, in chasing and trying to kill our our roots, they lost theirs. They lost the world. Not unfortunately, fortunately. So most of the Dutch people, African speaking people in, in South Africa will never truly know their roots because when they settled in South Africa, they never went back home. They never went back home. So generations generation later, many generations later, they then find themselves thinking that. Africa is their home and they will be forever lost because this will never ever ever they know deep down in their heart that this will never be their land. So tell me if you wanted the uh, part two or one. Thank you so much, guys. We're trying to hit 20,000 subscribers. I would appreciate your help if you can just click the subscribe button. Uh, you know, as we get to 20,000, I'm going to give away 10 t shirts. To different people, I hope in different provinces. I already have uh, Limpopo, Mpumalanga, and Gauteng. So I want I want more people from all the other provinces. Free state. I need you guys on the comment section to tell me that you are watching from the Free State and the Western Cape also and Northern Cape. It would be a pleasure to send to someone in the Northern Cape. Please send them a T-shirt of Paseta, the Pan-African School of Economics, Technology and Agriculture. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I appreciate all the support that you're giving me. Let's make this channel have a louder voice by clicking that subscribe button, sharing these videos on your WhatsApp status, Facebook status, wherever you want to share them, feel free to share these videos so that we can we can celebrate our own. It's important to celebrate our own. So until we meet next time, don't forget to pray. And after you pray, stand up, African child. Do your best so that God can do the rest. Peace in Pan-Africanism. I salute you. Black Heart, the hustle continua. 100% good quality t-shirts. Made to inspire you. Goals and dreams. T-shirts are now available at an affordable price. Place your order now. 68 473 6908 Instagram at black7576 Facebook page Blackheart